the time has come. Hi, welcome to this video in which I get rid of every single book on my bookshelf. I generally only keep books that I like or love and even those books that I love I usually give away to like spread some of that love. So this unhaul is gonna be kind of bittersweet but I think it'll also be fun to reminisce about all these books I really really enjoyed. Good shit, okay here we go. First up, All the Same in the Dark, I actually gifted this book to a friend who lives in New York. It's one of the earlier like mystery thrillers I I read and for that I appreciate it. It's also pretty. Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is a funny book. I really enjoyed it, did a shitty job of reviewing, and ultimately just had so much fun uh, <laughs> making this video. It's great. Lover Loser by Tessa Bailey. I generally slash always love Tessa Bailey books. Hopefully someone else will like this book. The Lighthouse Witches by CJ Cook. The first of quite a few books I've actually DNF. I kept my DNF books because I really wanted to read them. There's a Lucy Foley book coming up. It's Sarah J Mass book coming up like things I just want so badly to enjoy and want so badly to finish but I think it's time to move on we'll get to those though and the thing about the lighthouse witches is like I thought I could like it too I was just so burnt out on the genre so whatever there are plenty more to go um the vanishing half by Britt Bennett damn good book I've recommended this book to so many people so many people have enjoyed it this is so good. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This book is easy to read. That's <laughs> why I recommended it to people or let people borrow it. Good choice of a domestic thriller that's like pretty chill. Graceling, the graphic novel by Kristen Kishore and illustrated by Gareth Inns. Graceling was my favorite, favorite book of all time for a really long time. I think I still consider it one of my favorite books even though I haven't read it in a while and I'm so hyped that this was coming out. The Sweet Spot by Trish Doller. This was cute. It was, it, it was good. And then A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. It was also good, like not my thing, but I knew I wasn't interested in dentistry. Uh, they're still like both good. <laughs> or I think good is like books, even though like I didn't necessarily enjoy them. One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. I did not like this book at all. I don't remember if I hated it, but I, I don't think I did, not in hindsight at least. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Another book I've recommended to so many people. I think I've let quite a few people borrow this book. Um, it's good. I don't know why I put a question mark on the end of it. It's good. The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Another book that I've let people borrow a couple times and it's made my way back to me and I'm spreading the love. What can I say? It Happened One Summer and then Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I think that these are my two favorite Tessa Bailey books. I have great memories reading these books. Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. I did not end up making a video on this book. I enjoyed it. It had its moments. It had its not moments. And like all the rest of the books, we are moving on. Delilah Green doesn't care. It was cute. I uh, I think I really liked it. Maybe I didn't really like it. I, I remember like where I read it though. Um, I'll stick with recommending it. I don't know. I, uh, all these books are like far from my memory too. Not all of them. Some of them I read recently, but like in my opinion, that's like a reason to get rid of them, you know. The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I really liked, um, in Cold Blood when I was reading it in junior year of high school, which was so long ago. I really like that non-fiction-y side of things that's like told as a story and like is so ridiculous that like it could be fake, but it's real, so it makes it cooler. This was one of those, I recommended this book a couple times. It's long though, it took me so long to read, even if it's not that long. Guild by Raven Kennedy, not actually a fan take that. They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I really enjoyed this book. I think this book, I, I don't remember if I thought it was great. And like hindsight, uh, again, I don't think it was great. I'm not feeling like all the emotion after finishing it, but I really enjoyed it. Pretty Things by Janelle Brown. This was another one of the earlier mystery thriller things that I read. I'm not sure how I would feel about it now, but at the time I, like it really got me into the genre and for that I'm grateful. The Return by Jennifer Lynn Armentrout. I fucking love this book. This is such a Ooh, this was perfect for me. Um, I like, <laughs> I actually didn't let someone borrow it for some reason because I think I was like purging books and I was like, no, I want to keep it. I'm going to reread it. And at this point I've reread it enough and time for a new home. <laughs> the Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Mostly iconic, but at the same time, I don't think I generally have an appreciation for like, I'm going to call it a classic. Like I understand it's not a classic classic, but I generally don't have that appreciation for things like that, that are iconic. Um, it, 
<laughs> it was fine. <laughs> a Fate of Wrath and Flame. This book made me sad. I hated it. Sorry. Next up is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. It was, it was fine. It was a new adult romance based on Greek mythology, which honestly, like, I'll take. Absolutely, but I think I needed a break from like a new adult romance after that video. Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. Love, love, love. I am into this book. I think it's fantastic. Again, if it's what you're looking for, if you want a paranormal new adult romance that is very hot. Which who doesn't, right? We Were Never Here by Andrea Bards. I was pleasantly surprised by this book. I don't think I necessarily thought I was gonna dislike it, but there's this whole like psychology piece or like a, a way I've looked into characters minds that I guess I haven't before and I really enjoyed it I had a great time oh the Paris apartment by Lucy Foley one of those books I was gonna do a video on and I just couldn't get through I think my issue is that they wouldn't shut up about Ben or something like that like I don't even think it was that bad I just like could not pick it up I could not like continue to put myself through that I'm kind of curious what other people feel about that book I've never looked into it because I wanted to like read it and form my own opinion first that's generally what I do I don't look at reviews for books besides like does it only have three stars on Goodreads because I feel like that can be a red flag but you know, to each their own. Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. Another book, I, I think I just let my mom borrow it and she gave it back to me, but she really enjoyed it. Um, I think that's kind of when I figured out we have similar tastes in like mystery thrillers. Like we don't mind the slow burn thing, but we also hate like the type of ending that happened in this book. Generally, uh, good memories reading it. Uh-oh, <laughs> y'all may not like this one. House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. I didn't finish this book. One day I will give it another shot, but I just could not bring myself to keep picking it up. Like it, it wasn't that bad or anything. I just like truly wholeheartedly did not want to read it. And that being said, like I'm a Sarah J. Mass fan all the way. Like the Accord of Thorns and Roses series, I would read those books like as they came out. I absolutely love those. I think those actually like kind of got me back into reading. When the first book in this series came out, I think it was one of the earlier, if not the first reads of the year it came out and I read it in like two days which is impressive for like it's uh, the other ones this hefty as well I was excited for this I'm sure one day I'll get back to it but I uh not feeling it and it's time uh The Chase by L. Kennedy I have read a ton of good L. Kennedy books recently and like recently ish like within the past year and I especially enjoyed this one I enjoyed I think the main character the most and th that was really cool for me. Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor. There's one book in this series I didn't finish. I think it might be this one, even though like I love her writing and stuff. I think I was just kind of sick of the series and like I thought it was pretty similar. I don't know, I'm bad at reading series. Um, so that might've been my bad. And it was like towards the end of me filming a video, even though like I didn't have like deadline for it necessarily. I think I was getting a little sick of the romance genre, which I'm, I'm not anymore. I think I just need a little break. I was just cranking them out and honestly, I don't feel the need to finish it. So. Next up, The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. We love some Jewish identity representation. I think I actually had a lot in common with the main character when it comes to Jewish identity, interacting with the Jewish community. Like the main character in this book absolutely loves Christmas, which I can't say for myself, but like I have pages in here that I bookmarked just because I felt like my like thoughts were really well spoken. I think I might reread those bookmark pages before uh, donating that. I gotta rearrange a little bit. Every book I own is on this bed right now. Oh, and I found more. All right, The Kiss Thief by LJ Shen. I think I like this book. I have no memory of it. I read like five mafia romances in a row. Um, they blend together. My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I just read this. Um, I, <laughs> I had a lot of thoughts on it. And since it's like fresh in the mind, I still have so many thoughts and feelings about it. But overall, 
good, funny, whatever. From Blue Cop with Love, I DNF this book. It was a lot of complaining. <laughs> I didn't even get that far through it, but I know people love it. Can't Look Away by Carola Lovering. I just recently read this book too, and I certainly don't need it <laughs> in my life anymore. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Absolutely love this book. And therefore, like, I'm excited to give it away because I know someone else or not anyone else who picks up this book, but like, I think if you read the inside cover, you're gonna enjoy this book. Where the Crawdads Sit by Delia Owens. Good book! Now should it have been named the best book of the year by uh, all these groups on the back? You know, maybe not, but it's it's solid. The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I thought this was really interesting. Not interesting as like captivating, but like something I don't normally read, and so it was fun. I also generally really like her books, and I like they're all very different too, and so that was cool scene. Counterfeit by Kirsten Chen. I absolutely love this book. Shout out to everyone who is promoting it because you did good. The Mistake by L. Kennedy. Two thumbs up for me. Good book. The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. Um, not a fan. <laughs> Sorry. Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. Absolutely a fan. Good work, Tessa Bailey. All right, we're almost done. Next up, we have a couple books that I haven't read, like my physical TBR, as they say. I was genuinely trying to get through all of these books before I moved, but I think I quickly realized that like I hadn't read them because like I just wasn't interested or like some of them I got like 200 pages through and I'm like, you know what? I don't need this. For as avid as a book buyer, but also a book reader I am, I do a really good job of uh, reading every single book that I buy, but sometimes it just does not work out. All right, starting with the books that I at least tried to get through, Fortuna Sworn. I have a bookmark at 200 pages for this. I could have sworn I finished it, but um, I don't think I did because it was on the pile of books. I uh, didn't finish. I, I just don't need to. Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. I enjoyed reading this book, but every single time I picked it up, I just put it down and picked up another book. So I'm done. The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Um, basically the exact same situation. Every time I picked it up, I enjoyed it. Um, I think this book has more potential to be a book that I absolutely really like, but if there's something about it that's not letting me like even get to a hundred pages, like maybe it's a maybe I shouldn't be reading it or like trying to read it, pushing myself through it. Life is not that long for all the books in the world that I want to read. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I, uh, just the fact that on the book it says that she will die, I guess like I get why you would keep reading, but like pretty quickly I was, I don't know, maybe just like knowing the end of the book and then how we get there is not for me. I also didn't try that hard with that one. A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Um, this book was gifted to me through book of the month and I'm actually entirely not interested. I, I don't feel too bad about this one. How to Kidnap the Rich by Rule Reina. It's been sitting on my bookshelf for too long. I can't look at this anymore. It's gold though, which is cool. Oh, also I had videos planned for these books. Um, uh, most of these books, if not all of these books. So like also they had a purpose. I don't, I don't impulse buy books or if I do, I read them, you know, because I impulse buy them because they look good. Foundation by Isaac Asimov. You know, someday I'm gonna run out of video ideas and I'm gonna think to myself, damn, I really wish I read Foundation by Isaac Asimov, um, but I like can't. <laughs> it's a little hard to imagine. Um, I don't, not to be mean. And then finally, this is, this is the one book that I don't feel good about getting rid of and I do feel bad that I never even, uh, well, I did try and read it. Um, the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Look, Cersei scared me. I was not a fan of Cersei. I saw what was trying to be done, but like I was just not into it at the time. And I still don't think I would finish it even if I picked it up. And I'm scared of this book and I know people love it, but like nothing besides the video idea I had for it has like inspired me to pick this up. And I also feel like it's 
hindering my ability to read other things every single time I see kind of like a Greek mythology retelling situation I'm like no I have the song of Achilles at home and I think it is time to move on and for that I'm sorry I am actually keeping a couple books they're mostly like more coffee table ish type books like um, 50 places to hike before you die I have a cookbook 100 cookies I absolutely love it I have like two plant books on the ground. There are books about plants that I really enjoy. I have like a little bird watching guide. I um have the Steal Like an Artist and Keep Going by Austin Kleon. And yeah, those don't have like sentimental value for me, but I look through them and I enjoy them and I use them to like look things up and to like cook and to save my plants. So that would be like an actual literal waste. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. Wish me so much luck moving. I am not staying in the same city. It's a bit of a hike away, so it might get exciting, and I will see you in the next video.